गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन टूडे वी आर एंट्रिंग सेवेंटीन ऑफ अवर वर्कशॉप दिस वर्कशॉप फॉर द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव विद डॉक्टर निवेदिता लिंका फ्रॉम नेशनल सेंटर फॉर सेल साइंस पुणे शी इज वर्किंग ऑन शी इज अ वेरी सीनियर फैकल्टी देर साइंटिस्ट एफ and our research focus research group focuses on exploring the uh, guiding cues underlying the cell fate decisionary uh, decision machinery using pluripotent stem cells embryonic stem cells as a model system so first lecture we have this uh, from national center for cell science pune she is working on a so <clears throat> without further delay i invite uh, dr nivedita to deliver the lecture the floor is yours thank you dr murgan for the kind introduction and good morning everyone so today i will be discussing about stem cells with respect to what it is and what are the implications of stem cells the topic of my discussion the living life forms stem cells looking within and beyond so what does it mean basically so looking within means we need to understand what are the stem cells what are the basic characteristics that is within then beyond so what are the specific implications why one would study stem cells and living life forms when we talk about what is basically life so as all of us know life basically the molecule dna or rna For example, in some species, so the nucleic acid. In general, it's the DNA that is the molecule of life. So that provides us the identity of what we all are. When we are not alive, also the DNA content of us in fact to determine our identity. But however, the same identity, if it has to function, because in our body we have the DNA, the genomic DNA is there. And the genetic material what is there within us, so the same thing for specific function the regulation is tightly controlled. So when the control that machinery is lost or there is some kind of abnormality, we see lot of defects. But to function it normally, the regulatory machinery to function also it needs to be within something. What is that particular housing machinery? That is the cell. So the DNA is. Inside the cell, which functions normally, so the cell that houses this genetic material, in fact, it attests to our very existence. So what we are basically it is coming from because we all are made up of cells, tissues, and organs. So whether it is unicellular or multicellular, the cell has all the components for the proper functioning. So whatever we are doing day to day, also it is within the cell. And DNA being the genetic material, it is controlled in a specific way. That is what is determined. Then why, where all we have come from? It is very fascinating. In fact, to know that we all have come from a single cell. So that single cell, how it forms the entire organism? That's what the most fascinating part. How the cell decides to become different cell types? Because as you know, the development how it proceeds from a single cell that is zygote. Then when it develops. it comes to four cells then it comes to the morula stage which is eight cell stage and at this stage it's basically number of cells which have got no identity per se then further what happens when the blastocyst is formed on the blastula stage you have got the distinction of extra embryonic versus embryonic the outermost is the extra embryonic whereas the inner cell mass this is the icm or inner cell mass cells these are the cells which give rise to hyperblast and epiblast and these cells give rise to embryo proper why because further after this this gets implanted and then further after in post implantation gastrulation takes place during the gastrulation stage you see all the three germ layers form ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm it from ectoderm you are getting different cell types such as neural or skin cells major normal derivatives are the blood cells even the connective tissues and uh, the muscle cells endoderm mostly internal organs that got pancreatic beta cells those are the ones which are coming from endoderm 
at the same time. And if you see here, the time scale is mentioned more than two weeks, then you are getting the owner or the gamete formation is taking place there. So during development after gastrulation, during gastrulation, all three germ layers are developed. Then further during development, you are getting all the germ layer derivatives. Then those cells, they become more specialized and they give rise to specific tissues and organs. Then further during development, then you are getting the fetus and then adult, finally. So with this particular development, then where are the stem cells? Why stem cells basically? What is the meaning of stem? If you think literary sense, stem it defines as an origin or a branch. So then what could be the stem cells? And these cells, whatever I was talking during development, as I told, it is coming from a single cell. The single cell divides and forms different cell types. So the stem cells are the founder cells. From where all other cells are coming, then the tissues are being formed, then organs and the entire organism. So this is what, like any kind of building when you are thinking, the architect puts the foundation stone. Same way the stem cells are the cellular architect. So they ingrain the entire cellular architecture within and during development, the same thing. So it provides that after division, it provides the building blocks, the cells, then tissues, organs, or whether it is plant or animal, anything. So that is what is coming from the mother cell or the stem cell. So the question now comes, okay, if these are the stem cells, so why would one interest? In life form. So if the life is coming from these stem cells, so how would one understand how we all have come into being? If you understand the normal development, so stem cells, those are actually, there are during development, people study different developmental organisms are there. So those, one of the things which you can do at the cellular level, so using stem cells, that's what, if you study the early development, the precise, the profile in developmental hierarchy, then you would understand how the normal development proceeds. And if you know how the normal development proceeds, one can easily address what happens during digestive. So all of you must be familiar now, everybody is talking about STEM. So what is the implication of STEM cells in this arena of STEM? STEM which defines as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I have included another aim which is defined as medicine. So STEM cells, this particular field, it in fact extends to all these fields of STEM as well as medicine. So coming to the STEM field, science and technology, what is the contribution of stem cells and how do? Because whenever you are studying anything, as researchers, and since you all are science students, and this program also is meant for innovation. So in this case, so what we do specifically, so there we have to study what are the, how to innovate something, the innovating or critical thinking. So the questions as researchers we ask, what, how, and why. So specifically in terms of science and technology, we have to think what are the stem cells. And then comes in terms of technology, this is the science behind stem cells. And in terms of technology, how would one study stem cells? What are the tools, technology, and strategies one can define to study these stem cells? Then comes engineering and mathematics. What is the role of engineering and mathematics in this? Yes, we use mathematical tools and engineering strategies to define even the architecture. So once you think about the tools and technologies you will be using here and the knowledge, because this is a transdisciplinary area. So you can think of developing even organs, which would help in the organ replacement. Then coming to medicine, obviously as the organ replacement I have talked about, the implications there we ask why stem cells. So that are the questions, what, how, and why. As students of science, these are the questions basically we ask. Since curiosity is that is what it makes us researchers, and that leads to innovations and inventions. So coming to what are the stem cells, I will go one by one. What are the stem cells, basic stem cells? So based on, as I told, these are the mother or founder cells. So where from you will derive? If I go back, what I showed here, during development, you are seeing, as I mentioned, during gastrulation, all three germ layers are developed. And this is the stage where you are getting embryonic versus extra embryonic. So if you are taking stem cells from any of these stages, 
according to the type of their derivation. Those can be defined as either embryonic or if you are taking from fetal, fetus, it will be fetal or adult tissues, it will be adult. So source of derivation will define as basically two categories, embryonic versus adult. At the same time, the newer thing has come, which is called cancer stem cells. So the recent dogma states, the cells in our body, why are we getting cancer? The stem cell basis of cancer, many groups are studying now. So if you can understand, because normal stem cell, they have a defined plan, how they divide or differentiate. But once the cells in cancer, what happens? The cells undergo only limited proliferation without undergoing differentiation. So you are getting tumor, it can be benign or malignant. So in this case, the cellular machinery is disturbed. So how these cells become cancerous? If you can understand even normal stem cell, how they divide or differentiate, what is that which is getting disturbed because of the cancer is coming? That's where the cancer stem cell concept is coming into me and people are studying cancer stem cells. So these are based on the source, but based on differences and potential, not what kind of cells they can give rise to? The stem cells can be defined as totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, unipotent. There is also another oligopotent. But basically, these are the categories. Totipotent, that is in toto. So if you think in toto means entire organism is formed. In plant, we know they have meristems, meristematic tissues. If you take the meristematic tissue, you can get the entire plant. Those are totipotent cells. In animal kingdom, if you see the single cell dipod stage, two to four cells sometimes because you are getting the monogenetic twins. So in that case, two to four cell embryo also can be totipotent. When the embryonic versus the extra embryonic part is not defined. So further down the line, you have got pluripotent cells, which can give rise to all the cell types in our body. So this can be either inherent pluripotency, which is basically when the developing embryo we are taking the ICM cells, which is can give rise to embryo proper, those are the cells which are called embryonic stem cells, which are derived from the developing blastocyst, from the ICM, blastocyst stage of the embryo from the ICM. So those are the pluripotent cells because they can give rise to all the cell types. There is another one is called reprogram. You can also reprogram or rewire the system to get pluripotent stem cells like embryonic stem cells. So that I will discuss further and in fact, for this reprogramming, as all of you might be knowing, the Nobel Prize has gone in 2012 to Dr. Yamanako and John Gordon. So under this category, embryonic stem cells are there. Even primordial germ cells, PG or EG cells, when the gametes are formed, the gonads are formed, from that the germ cells also have the potential because they are also giving rise to the entire. So these are also pluripotent cells. In same also true for embryonal carcinoma cells, they can also give rise to different cell types or all the cell types. So those are coming under pluripotent category. Then comes tissue-restricted cells which are present in adults. Those are multipotent stem cells. Multipotent cells also many. So many cell types they can give. What are the examples? For example, hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic stem cells are the ones which can give rise to all the blood cell types. Same also true for neural stem cells. Neural stem cells can give rise to neurons, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes. So, because they can give rise to multiple cell types, those are multipotent. Then comes unipotent, where the cell can give rise to only one particular cell type. So, as the development proceeds, what happens? Embryonic stem cells, what we are getting from inner cell mass cells, that the body plan is made. Then three germ layers are formed. Once the germ layers are formed, then they are becoming more tissue restricted. Then the question comes, where from these adult stem cells are coming? So there is one school of thought, what it states. So probably during this development, some cells, they remain during that niche or the micro environment in that particular tissue or the organ, which actually it avoids or evades the differences and inducing signal. And they remain undifferentiated or unspecialized. So they become tissue restricted in that particular tissue type confined to them, and they become stem cells in adult because as we grow, it becomes specific to that. So those are categorized as tissue restricted stem cells. For convenience sake, we categorize those as adult stem cells. Those can be derived from fetal or adult tissues. And I have mentioned here many of these fetal tissues, umbilical cord blood, amniotic fluid, placenta, 
in umbilical cord those are the ones from where you can get the fetal tissue in fact that is like wealth out of waste so now we know what are the different stem cell types then coming to okay if you know these are the stem cells where from you will get those so as i mentioned from embryo you can get the embryonic stem cells so coming to the first embryonic stem cells which are very important so these are the requisites or from where you can get embryo embryo it can be from in vitro fertilization as all of you know the in vitro fertilized embryo which are discarded embryo which are not implanted from that itself one can derive the embryonic stem cell same also true for scnt that is somatic cell nuclear transfer so this i will talk about also what it is and then parthenogenetic basically it is a vegetative propagation it is seen in animal kingdom so from these embryos one can derive the embryonic stem cells so how one can do it can be either by direct embryo culture or there are different strategies laser micro dissection so i will show you further then another strategy is immuno surgery so these are coming from the embryo the other thing is from somatic cell by reprogramming or rewiring the system in a somatic cell you can bring back to the naive state that is embryonic stem cell like state there it is called reprogramming and there also you can derive the pluripotent embryonic stem cell like cells this can be achieved by either embryonic gene transfer that i will also talk about during my further discussion so this or you can do direct reprogram so i will go one by one so first talking coming to somatic cell nuclear transfer as i was telling that can be categorized as one is therapeutic cloning one is reproductive cloning what is scnt as the name suggests it's a somatic cell nuclear transfer so you are taking any cell these are the steps i have mentioned the same thing in schematic it is mentioned here so you take any stem any cell from our body so for example patient cell so this because the nucleus which is ingraining the blueprint of the an organism so that is the genetic material that defines our identity so the nucleus is already there then you take the egg e nucleate the egg so here the identity of this particular egg is gone then either you can fuse the cell with this or take the nuclear material and put into this so then whatever cell it is having the egg cell without nucleus e nucleated egg if you have this particular nuclear material in this so it will actually achieve the identity of the donor cell then this is again for the stimulated and developed by chemical or mechanical stimulation it develops the blastocyst then you take the inner cell mass cells then get the embryonic stem cells and then grow differentiate and if it is required it can be given given to a patient for therapeutic purpose so this is defined as therapeutic cloning because you are stopping here at this stage without implanting but in animal species this particular blastocyst is implanted then you are getting the specific genetic material whatever you are getting because if you have a superior form the same nuclear material is here then if you are implanting dolly is the best example of scnt you must be knowing about the dolly's creation so this was the example that was created through this somatic cell nuclear transfer that is under reproductive cloning because you are getting the entire organism so this is nothing but advanced modification of assisted reproductive technology so these are the steps i already described so this actually this thing is very old it's not very new even the dolly came quite late 96 97 so it's 1938 when spaman was uh, studying the development process that time he had in fact thought about that and he had used tadpole larvae subsequently bees and king 1952 they have demonstrated if you take frog embryo and that particular egg cell you try to inuclear and take the frog embryo less different because this is a tadpole or the early stage then you take the nuclear material take the egg inuclear egg and you are getting most of these developed to tadpole subsequently john gordon who got the nobel prize he had demonstrated if you take even from a fully differentiated cell he take, took the intestinal stem intestinal cells and that donor nucleus put into the inuclear egg there also he could develop into tadpole but less than 2% so this in fact brought to the question so does the stage of the cell that donor cell matters yes in this 
So this graph which shows in fact the stage of donor cell. The earlier stage, the donor cell which is younger, so that has made better efficiency or potential to give rise to the entire organs. So this is what it shows even in terms of stem cell creation also this is also seen. So the, uh, as you see gradually it decreases as the donor cell differentiation stage also goes up, the efficiency also goes down. There are other limitations associated with SCMT, specifically available to oocytes if you think in terms of human. So there, have to, there has to be some donors who can donate oocytes. So available to oocytes, the other thing is heteroplasty. As I said that you are having the egg nu nucleus. Is, egg nucleus is removed, so it is inhibited, but you have got the cytoplasm or the mitochondria DNA. But the donor cell, when you are giving it to it, so it has got the mixture of mitochondria from the donor and the recipient egg. So that's why it, it creates the heteroplasm. But the newer strategies now are they are in fact developing. So if you can remove the donor mitochondrial DNA by ethidium bromide treatment, and then you can actually get the homoplasmic state. And then epigenetic signature maintenance. As we know during development, epigenetics that uh, the methylation, de novo methylation, demethylation, those are the different states the embryo goes through. So wherever you are getting the donor nuclei, epigenetic, because when during development, there is demethylation, de novo methylation, that particular signature is erased when you are taking from the adult institution. So whether this can be maintained or not, that is also another question mark. And influence of differences on state already I told. Sometimes what happens, the memory of previous gene expression in the sense if you are taking from the donor cells, for example, here it is shown from the muscle. So when this is developed, so mostly it is retaining that particular status of the muscle identity. So this is also one of the limitations. But the availability of oocytes, that problem people are thinking whether you can use it in the like a cross species oocytes to tackle this problem. But in any anyway, in human case, it is not permitted ethically correct. But in animal kingdom, it is possible. Next, so Dolly, as I told, this is the example how it has been generated. I will not go deep into this. Then comes parthenogenesis, which is a vegetative propagation. The same way in animal species, if you want to create superior god, so you take that particular uh, that particular animal oocyte, then that you mechanically or chemically stimulate and bring it to blastocyst stage, then you can implant it or you can get the ICM cells and different, develop into the embryonic stem cells. So that would behave like embryonic stem cells, what we are getting from the ICM cells of any, like during developing embryo. The other thing that I talked about immunosurgery or major mediated microdissection. So if you see the blastula stage of blastocyst, so this is the inner cell mass and this is outermost is trophoblast, which gives rise to the placenta or the extra embryonic part. There is one covering which is a mucilaginous covering that is the zona pellucida. So, ledger microdissection, what it does, it forms a nick here, low power ledger. Then, through a pipette, micro pipette, you just take out this ICM and culture. So, that is ledger microdissection. In immunosurgery, what we do basically, this is actually it's done in our lab only. So, to dissolve past the zona pellucida using some peptides, then you are getting only the trophoblast and this nursing mass. Then immunosurgery, it is an implication for it means. So you are using specific antibodies against the trophoblast. Then if you use the complement, complement function is to chew the wherever the antibody is bound. So using the same strategy, so wherever the antibody will bind to the trophoblast, so the trophoblast the outermost layer. So antibody bound trophoblast will be chewed by complement. And then you are getting only the ICM cells. So this is called the culture. So here you can see the cells which have been cultured. These are human from the human blastocyst, the human embryonic stem cell derived, and these are mouse embryonic stem cells. So these cells are grown either in presence of a feeder, that is the fibroblast cells, they secrete specific cytokines, which helps in the maintenance of the embryonic stem cells. So you are developing these embryonic stem cells here from the ICM cells, either from human or any species for that matter. And this can also be grown without the fibroblast, but in presence of specific cytokines. I will not go much deeper into this, but you can only think
think about how the stem cells, embryonic stem cells can be obtained, what I showed you already, discussed about it. Then once you get that, you have to propagate. So this is how these are cultured. Further, this can be propagated either by enzymatic manner or mechanically you can dissect one person it and culture it. So this way you can propagate further and you can also crease those for the future applications or future studies. Those can be cryo -stored. So the next approach of getting embryonic stem cells or pluripotent stem cells is induced pluripotent stem cells as I told, it can come, it can, one can get from the somatic cells. So Yamanaka, he was the one who has in 2006 reported elegant work and because of which he got the Nobel Prize, he first demonstrated in mouse, then it went to human. Now there are so many groups working and different strategies have been developed more improved version of the strategy has been developed also. So initially what he has done, he has taken the skin fibroblast, dermal fibroblast cells, skin cells, and those cells, he has out of 24 such factors, he has nailed down to four such factors, opt for SOX2, KLF for CMIC. So these are in fact called as Yamanaka factors. Using those factors, why it is so, what is the rationale behind it? because these are the hallmark or the signature of embryonic stem cells. So when you try to overexpress these genes, so the somatic cells, it rewired itself and became embryonic-like stem cells, which retain the same pluripotent nature of PS cells, which are coming from the ICM cells of developing embryo. Further down the line, you have Jamie Thompson's group. They have shown that opt for SOX2, NANOG, and LIN28. These are another four factors, which are also specific to ES cells. Those, in fact, contribute to the induced pluripotent stem cell development. Because in this case, KLF4 and CMIC, those are oncogenes. So there are some concerns if you are introducing these, maybe the cells will become tumorigenic. In fact, embryonic stem cells, because being pluripotent, they give rise to all the cell types. They have got indefinite self renewal, and they form also teratoma-like, benign tumor-like structures. So in this case, to get rid of these oncogenes, so they have come up with nano and lin 28 In fact, these four, so replacing these two KLF and CME, even IPSs can be generated. And what is the importance of IPSs? If you think about embryonic stem cells, as I told, it is coming from developing embryo. So when you are taking the ICM cells, that embryo is lost. So there are some ethical concerns regarding that because you are sacrificing the embryo. But in this such field, we don't take the embryos that are implanted. We take the only the which are discarded embryo. But in case if you are thinking in terms of therapy, if you want to use these stem cells in any kind of patient, because already you have destroyed that embryo, and whatever embryonic stem cell you are getting, it is not becoming patient specific. SCNT because you can get patient specific, but there the efficiency is low as I told also there are some limitations also. But reproductive cloning is not permitted in that. But when it comes to induced pluripotent stem cells, the beauty of this system is you are taking the embryonic, any somatic cell or any stem cell and bringing back to the naive state of embryonic stem cell like cells and embryonic stem cell big pluripotent can give rise to all the cell types. Unlike other adult stem cells. So here, these will have the same characteristics features of embryonic stem cells. And if anybody has any genetic disorder, you are replicating the same genetic disorder in a dish. Because if you are studying any disease, we usually depend on animal models. But for every disease, there is no specific animal model available to you. If you have genetic disorder, if you are getting the same nuclear material and bringing back to ES cell-like state, you are actually mimicking the same disease type in a dish. So disease in a dish you are getting. Then one can think of, okay, if this is what is happening, what, what are the causatives for that disease? Then you can address the disease better. And you can find out the strategy how to curb the cell. So these are the specific or the advantages which has um, drawn a lot of attention these days from different comments, from the scientific community and clinicians alike. So this... I will show you the example that we have developed in our lab in fact. So this is, a, these are actually the, we have grown from the, this is also coming from the skin cells of the normal fibroblast cells, which we have developed, uh, rewired or reprogrammed the cells 
and which are grown in presence of this feeder layer. The feeder, because it is supporting trophic, it is supporting the cells to grow or providing trophic factors. So these, are, as you can see, the colonies are appearing over a period of time, and these are further taken and propagated. So this is how one can derive the pluripotent stem cells, either from ICM cells I showed you earlier, and these are coming from the reprogrammed cells, from the skin dermatophyta cells. I will come next to other stem cells. The same question comes, okay, these are tissue restricted cells, then how one can get? So one has to think about what are the sources it can get. If you think of other stem cells, yes, in our body, in discrete pockets, those are there in different organs. Then also we have, but if you have to access neural stem cells, the question comes, will you cut open the brain? So that is invasive procedure and nobody probably think of cutting open the brain to get the neural stem cell. Even we have got muscle specific stem cells, specific organs, liver stem cells, and hematopoietic stem cells, everybody is very much familiar. In the bone marrow, you have got two types of stem cells. One is hematopoietic stem cells, one is mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells are multipotent. They give rise to bone heart cartilage tissues. So, one has to think what are the tissue source, what are you interested in? So what I was talking about, umbilical cord, cord blood, even placenta. Cord blood, you can get both hematopoietic stem cells and mesenchymal stem cells. Cord and placenta give rise to, you can get even adipose, those who are undergoing bariatric surgery. So the adipose tissue also can give rise, you can, one can derive emesis from that. So these cells, so one has to choose the tissue source. Then question comes, how will you isolate? the stem cells. You can either go for enzymatic digestion or you can do explant culture. So if you want to understand how to culture cells, please go through the Krishni book. I think probably Dr. Burban might have shared with you. If you go through, you can have a basic understanding how the cells are cultured. As we all know, we require specific nutrients for our growth. Same also the cells would require specific nutrients for that growth. Growth factors, nutrients, the same thing when you are culturing. Once you get the cells, you have to culture, you have to maintain. Then, depending on the requirement, you have to differentiate. Other thing is called trans differentiation. As we know, cis and trans element, trans is something separate because if it is crossing the lineage barrier, it in fact indicates the plasticity of a particular cell. So, if a muscle cell, which is destined to become muscle cells, it can cross the lineage barrier and give rise to neural cells, or it can give rise to blood cells, or, or vice versa. That is called trans differentiation. But when I talked about induced pluripotent stem cells, that is the phenomenon of de differentiation. You know, differentiation it is a maturation from naive state to more mature state. De differentiation it is actually the reverse of the process. Mature cells coming back to the naive state. That is de differentiation, which is which we are doing by reprogramming or induced pluripotent stem cell, that is the phenomenon which is powering de differentiation. Trans differentiation in adult cells, whichever cells state are those are in, if they cross the lineage barrier and give rise to another cell, that is trans differentiation. So, by manipulating the culture condition, one can accomplish this trans differentiation or de differentiation by genetic or even the culture condition that we have. Then, once you get that, the question. The further characterization has to be done. You have to induce purify and further the downstream studies one can do. So these are the examples what I was telling in different organs. As you can see, in many most of our actually tissues and organs, we have distal pockets. They remain in a quiescent states. They have all the physiology written, but they remain in a quiescent state in our body. Other when there is any kind of insult or any injury, there is any requirement. Then they attain the mitotic status and then divide and differentiate. One would ask why they remain in Poisson state. That is what actually the nature has devised, probably that kind of means or way. If they keep on dividing, obviously you will get tumor what happens in cancer. So in that particular microenvironment of the niche, those are helping the cells to remain in Poisson state. But other when there is an injury, it provides some kind of signal or trigger to these cells, then they divide and differentiate. So that's how the replacement or replenishment of the damaged cells is taking place in our body. But then one would question how then the disease is coming? Since these are 
limited in number in our body, which are present in our body, but very limited. So they also undergo limited self renewal. Unlike embryonic stem cells, which undergo indefinite self renewal. As you know, when the cell divides, we have got telomere. Every cycle, the telomere shortening is happening. So the replicative senescence stage, because further no replication happens because telomere has come to a stage where no shortening, further shortening happens, and there is not much telomerase enzyme available. Embryonic stem cells have got very, very high telomerase activity because of which one can get indefinite cell renewal of these embryonic stem cells. Adult stem cells, they have, unlike embryonic stem cells, they have got limited cell renewal property because of this telomerase concept and telomere shortening. So since these are in discrete pockets, so even if they divide and differentiate, because of the limited number of cells, one cannot think that they can replenish the damaged tissue. And depending on the extent of damage or injury, or what kind of insult is there in the micro environment, that is what determines the disease status or disease status. I'll show you some example that we have done in our lab. So these are actually from different sources. The mesenchymal stem cells have been derived. This is from the human bone marrow. This is from umbilical cord blood and umbilical cord and placenta. You can see they have different specific morphology also. And even in terms of self renewal of the uh, proliferation potential also varies among different stem cells that we have also seen in our study. Then once you are getting this cell, for the next question comes, okay, now we know the sources, we know how to derive them. Once we have the cells, how to know that those are actually the cells that we are interested in? Then one has to characterize the cells. So what are the characters features? I have already told also specifically, the stem cell, they undergo self renewal. The embryonic stem cells undergo indefinite self renewal. That means it is renewing themselves. Whereas adult stem cells, they have limited self renewal capability. Then comes differentiation. Differentiation already also I have mentioned about specific potency, pluripotent, multipotent, unipotent, totipotent, I have not categorized here because whatever stem cells you are getting, either from embryonic or adult sources, you can give, they can give rise to only these particular cell types. Either they can be pluripotent, give rise to all the cell types in our body, multipotent or unipotent. Even there is plasticity, what I was telling you, they can cross the lineage barrier, transdifferentiate into different cell types. So, based on these, we can characterize whether they are undergoing self renewal or not by propagating, whether they are undergoing differentiation based on what cells we are interested in. Then further comes regeneration potential, that is basically in our adult body, whatever distinct population we have in our body, that actually those stem cells, those are serving as a mean of repair, as I told, as and when the need arises, they divide and differentiate. So it becomes a mean of repair or regeneration potential. In fact, this is the study now going on, how to activate the endogenous stem cells in our body so that they can take part or participate in the rescue process of the functional restoration of the cells that are damaged. Then these stem cells, in fact, they're amenable to genetic manipulation. So that is what that kind of work, in fact, we plan our work, then can we manipulate the cells if there is any genetic defect? As I was telling, you can develop disease in a dish by induced pluripotent stem cells on the reprogrammed stem cell. So they are, if there is any genetic defect, can you manipulate that? Because now the newer strategy has come, which is called gene editing. So if you can edit that gene and rectify that, then you are restoring the normal gene signature and it can, the cells containing the same normal genome, gene signature can be given to the patient. So that can be, even gene therapy, I will talk also next, the implication part. So these cells are amenable to genetic manipulation, so you can manipulate and you can rectify the defective genes signature in there. So once you get the cells, now you have characterized. Then comes the self renewal. Self renewal, it can be either symmetric, symmetric, plus asymmetric, and asymmetric. I already told independent self renewal versus limited. So indefinite cell renewal, which is seen in, term, in case of embryonic stem cells or pluripotent stem cells, basically it is through symmetry. Because the stem cell gives rise to two stem cells, again the daughters two, two, each stem cell giving rise to two, 
So during early development, this is the process which is happening. And symmetric plus asymmetric also is happening in case of embryonic stem cells. As the, the development progresses, once they become during gastrulation, when they become tissue restricted or the progenitor cells, they are so once these stem cells they become progenitors, each progenitor can give rise to one stem cell and maybe one mature cell. So here it becomes more defined. So the same one give rise to one stem cell, one mature cell. So this is a hybrid system, symmetric plus asymmetric. Asymmetric. If you see multipotent stem cells, they give rise to this kind of cells. system also, symmetric plus asymmetric. And asymmetric, where actually one stem cell give rise to one stem cell, parental uh, the characteristics lifted, and on a, another one becomes mature. And from this more mature or the progenitor state, two progenitors are formed. Here the stem cell, one becomes one stem cell and one becomes progenitor. So this is what happens also during development. So, once we are studying cell renewal, if you are studying embryonic stem cell, we see whether they are undergoing indefinite cell renewal through this process. Once we make those to specific, direct those to a specific lineage, we see whether the progenitors are being formed, then further maturation is taking place or not. So, in this case, we study this kind of cell renewal. And once we know the cells are really renewing, then we try to see whether the progenitors are giving more mature cells by cultural manipulation, as I told, specific factors or growth factors or cytokines, even the culture conditions that we provide, whether hypoxic, normoxic, or defined conditions that we design. So with that manipulations, we try to induce the cells to direct to a specific lineage. In the ECM components, how the cells adhere, some cells grow in suspension also, some have to be adherent. So how the ECM components are in place and how they contribute, what kind of ECM components are giving or adding, putting the dishes with cells also behave differently. Then as I told by genetic manipulation also we trigger specific, like the way we are inducing pluripotency using specific factors, the same way also by genetic means we can direct the cells to different cells. So, but this particular process is highly regulated. If there is any kind of like a disturbance in that, the system goes haywire. It's similar to traffic signal. Here, what happens? You have three lights, right? One is red, yellow, and green. Red says stop, yellow says get ready, green says go. So during development, when the germ layers are defined also, when the specific stem cells are there, once it is required to divide or differentiate, so that is the ready state. When it is at the progenitor state, get ready, then go is it gets the green signal to give rise to specific state. But when there is any kind of insult or injury or anything, so thus this whatever the stop signal doesn't function properly. So this is the way actually there is a proper balance is maintained and specific way it can act the cellular architecture, whatever the blueprint is in brain. So it defines specific path and cells are following the same path. So when the traffic signal, it's properly maintained, everybody is following, everything goes in a regulated fashion. Same also happens in our body. But when the system, nobody follows the traffic, especially near the airport or the stations, as you know, this is what happens. And ultimately it also leads to fatality or cell death. Same thing happens in our body too. If the cells are not following the specific pattern of cell division or differentiation, we get specific developmental disorders and same thing also happens in case of cancer. So when the cells go haywire, they don't follow the specific pattern of cell division or cell cycle, then the cancer is coming. So this is why the cell, when we get the cells, when we culture the cells, we characterize, we also see whether they are following the same normal developmental pattern, they are maintaining the normal development or the signature of themselves. So there are specific markers we study and we differentiate those and see that whether they are differentiating properly or not. Then we know, okay, these cells, they are maintaining their normal signatures or the normal characteristics. I will show you some example that we have done in our lab. So these are actually embryonic stem cells from mouse. Mouse embryonic stem cells will have differentiated or directed those two neural lineage. 
and this is the signature which is expressed microtubule associated protein we have shown that these are in fact because whatever we see under microscope these are viewing under microscope the light cells and then we see also they are retaining the characteristics by specific immunostaining seeing the signature of that gene so we know these are new ones same thing it's not only seeing that even we see how dynamic those cells are i'll show you the videos here you can see even though those are looking like static under the microscope they're highly dynamic they talk to each other and this talking process in fact that helps in them because when the cells are in unspecialized state how they become one would ask how the cells become more specialized or specific so because of the cell cell interaction even ecm interaction so the cross talk because of that they get specific signaling there is autotrine signaling no doubt even paracrine signaling also affect that and because of the cross talk with intracellular and intercellular communication they talk to each other and the specific cell head is determined because of that so one can actually study the cellular dynamism by light cell imaging we see how the cells are being formed from the unspecialized cells and once they are formed what kind of cells they are giving rise to so here because we have used jp we can easily mark the cells of our interest these are in fact dopaminergic cells that i am showing dopaminergic neuronal cells that i am showing you here and same thing that is ectodermal derivatives because we have done embryonic stem cells so you have to see all three germinal differences are taking place or not so ectodermal derivatives are shown by neural differences these are mesodermal derivatives so that the myogenic cells cardiomyocytes as you can see they are showing pulsating activities and in fact they also have the electrical signal passing from one to another that is what we see whether they are differentiating into the myogenic lineage or not so ectoderm and these are mesodermal cells are differentiated same also is true another myogenic that is the, this is actually i have borrowed the slide from done by duke university they have shown the skeletal myocytes here we are showing the human embryonic stem cell differentiated with skeletal myocytes which are skeletal muscle specific positive marker we have shown and these also show the pulsating activity smooth muscles also we have done those also show pulsating activity so then comes endodermal derivatives which are pancreatic beta cells so these are embryonic stem cell derived beta cells which in fact show insulin release glucose induced stimulated insulin release so that is the physiological activity of the cells so it's not only generating cells even we have to see whether they retain the physiology so people do electrophysiological activity we see in fact neurons they have specific action potentials maintain so that indicates the cells which are in vitro or artificially generated cells are indeed functional they are retaining the physiological activity so this is the compendium showing the embryonic stem cells can give rise to all the cell types these are pluripotent so ectodermal derivative neurons astrocytes oligodendrons dendrocytes specific sub types of neurons serotonergic dopaminergic etc they are also given as to mesoderm skeletal muscles cardiomyocytes endoderm beta cells like eyelid like cells then comes to other stem cells they are also you can show the multipotent other stem cells we have used mesenchymal stem cells i showed you from different sources the same cells we have differentiated because those are capable of giving rise to bone fat and fatty acids that means osteocytes adipocytes and chondrocytes i have shown your osteocytes with specific staining these are in red so these are showing the calcium deposits or the mineralization and these are the adipocytes where you can see the oil or lipid deposits so and chondrocytes also i have not shown included the slide those also can be differentiated into chondrocytes that shows the cells that we have got or got from the cells the tissue that we have taken and grown and those are also retaining the inherent differences of potential other aspect is trans differences of the cellular plastic the same as i told they can cross the lineage barrier and give rise to other cell types so same thing we have studied too using the msc we have shown whether they can be trans differentiated into neural lineage or not as you can show after dating they have got phenotypes of the specific like of the characteristics how the neurons look with specific processes i'll show you the video you can see how these cells over a period of time they differentiate into neuronal like cells or neural cells rather i would say 
Once you do specific staining, then you can say these are neurons or astrocytes. The same thing also we have shown, not only, okay, I'll go to the next one. They can also differentiate into endothelial-like cells. Endothelial cells, they form tubular structure. So endothelial tube formation, in fact, it happens over a period, as you can see the tube formation from the mesenchymal stem cell. So this is what actually the beauty of stem cells. When you take the stem cells, not only getting the cells, you are maintaining the cells and you are looking under a microscope how the life is being formed, how different cells are talking to each other and what different cell types are being formed from that. So it is not only that what you get from this, but this is the basic biology science and technology that I talked about. Now coming to the integration part, why stem cells? I talked about what are the stem cells? How we can get the stem cells? How we can characterize the stem cells? What are the properties you can study? Then why stem cells? So what are the implications of stem cells? Why would one study stem cells? So basically this is coming under the same, whatever from the stem category E and M. One can study basic biology. As researchers, basic biologists, we always think about studying intricacies of development. So I was showing you also how the cells are maintained, the cells are differentiated, even I can study the dynamism of that. So through this process, we can understand how unspecialized cells or the blank state, whatever the cells are, they are becoming more defined and they can give rise to specialized cell types. So if I understand what are the determinants or the key candidates or the factors which are guiding the cells to become one cell type versus the other. So if you think about development, how a cell decides to become neuronal cell type or muscle cell type? So the question obviously comes, there must be something within that which is defining, even though we have the same genetic makeup in every cell, but every cell has, has its own signature, own specific candidates or the factors, because some specific genes are expressed, epigenetic mechanism is involved there, so the machinery, that genetic and epigenetic machinery, what are functioning? So if you can understand using this stem cell, how the development proceeds, so we can understand intricacy of development, the normal development of process person. Then we can understand what happens during any kind of disease process. So this is what under the basic biology, then applied science, one can understand the diagnostic aspect would come, how, because you have developing disease in a disease, you will know how the disease progression is taking place. So you are having the disease model, predictive model for drug toxicity as in pharma industry, you have implications. Even for livestock or jump plasma improvement in veterinary institutes or veterinary field, therapeutic implication in clinics, you can also have the therapeutic proteins, antibodies, cells developed for cell replacement, cell tissue, organ transplantation can be done. Even in the now, stem cell has gone another level where you can get the cells like muscle cells of those who are non-vegetarian, they're thinking in fact, such studies are also done. If you can develop muscles from cells, which are edible. So instead of meat, so if you can have from stem cells develop artificial meat development, so that industry also is coming up now. So I'll go one by one. So to understand all these implications, what are the means? One can be preventive as I was telling, if you can study the endogenous stem cell machinery, one can think of how to prevent the disease process. Reparative, same also, you can think of how to repair or regenerate within the body. So intrinsic regeneration potential, liver is already having. If you can study how it is done and using the exogenous stem cell therapy. So if you can activate endogenous, already I talked about. So the cells that we are generating also in vitro, if the there is any genetic defect through gene therapy. If there are any damaged cells, cell replacement therapy, not only that, even one can go to the defective organ replacement by developing organs per se through tissue engineering. So miniature, if you want to study basic development, you can also have miniature organs, which are called organelles. I will talk about that also. So coming to the gene therapy aspect using stem cells. So this is nothing but you are replenishing the defective gene with the healthier counterpart. So in this case, usually we use viral vectors, which are replication incompetent. Then you are putting the 
corrected gene version of the defective one, and then you are given to the patient. Jim Olson in University of Pennsylvania, who is the pioneer, in fact, he started using it, but there are some hurdles in between, but now it has again take, taken the pace in the same result. And now the newer thing which is coming is gene editing. In fact, whatever defective gene, if you can do even rectify that, there are ethical concerns there, whichever cannot go to the germ plasm. So one can think probably, just one second, please. Sorry for the interruption. So, so if you have the specific gene defect, so that also you can edit. As long as it doesn't go to germ plasm, so ethical concerns are limited. So that also, but still there is a lot of questions also remaining in that aspect. And these are the examples where all it has already been implicated. And recent, in fact, news all of you might be knowing about where peak to human heart transplant has been done. So in this case, in fact, they have done like edited the gene or by knocking down or overexpressing three of pig genes they have knocked out and added six of human genes to make the graft accepted by the patient. So such way also studies have been carried out and people have been doing much more research in this area. Next comes cell replacement therapy. As I showed, you can generate the cells of your interest by manipulating the culture conditions. So once you get the cells, one can think of whether it can go be given to the patient. It's CMT anyway, that is also patient-specific cells you can derive. Induced pluripotent stem cells you can derive patient-specific. One is direct reprogramming. One cell, that is the task differentiation phenomenon. One cell you can direct those to another cell type of your interest because one cannot possibly caught upon the brain and get NSCs. If you are requiring neurons, whether we can use MSCs and trans differentiator neurons and get enough number of cells, there are still a lot of controversies in the, this area, but the potential remains used. So one can think of, and cell replacement therapy, all of you know bone marrow. That is in the uh, first stem cell, in fact, this therapy is well known to everyone. In fact, in blood cancer, so that is what we're thinking of there, even the movies and other things also, many things have come up and people already know about this therapeutic intervention using bone marrow derived stem cells, which contain hematopoietic stem cells, because it can give rise to all the blood cell types. Same also people are trying MSCs for the osteogenic differentiation. Even in cerebral palsy and all, people have also used trans differentiation phenomenon to some extent. Many, in fact, many of the private clinics and doctors are claiming as if stem cells are panacea for all diseases. But as researchers will do practice caution, there are a lot of groundwork which are required to be done before coming to that kind of conclusion. But cell replacement therapy in many of the diseases should have been in fact tried. Nimble stem cells, as you know, ocular disorders people have tried and it's a very good work going on even within India itself. Edu Prasad I Institute, AIMS, even Sampan Netrano, they have been doing. Even AIMS, some studies have been done long back, myocardial impacts, some people also have tried. All over the world, many studies have been done for the cell replacement therapy. So, and even when you are seeing the plasticity, as I talked talk to you also, that also people are studying whether you can do. Initial studies were done with fetal stem cell transplantation, in fact, in Parkinson's. But as I told, there are stem cells in fetus and adult, but they have got limited cell tendon property. So this is before surgery in Parkinson, that is the movement disorder. Dopaminergic neurons get degenerated. So in their case, so they have taken from the aborted fetus, they have taken the stem cells and implanted. So this is before surgery, this is post-surgery. You can see the functional neurons are getting restored. As you can see the damaged neurons, the dopaminergic neurons, which are there in the midbrain or the substantia nigra region, those have gone replaced. We have also done similar study in the animal model using that. And these are mouse dopaminergic neurons and the neural stem cells we have implanted. So this is one side of the brain in fact by inducing specific drug. We have developed heavy Parkinsonian model. One side is intact, another side to get the degenerated cells. So after implantation, this is what is the restoration status. So we have shown that the hypnotic stem cell derived neural stem cells are in fact capable of restoring the function or regenerating the cells 
those have been damaged. But one has to also maintain person. When you are thinking of cell replacement therapy, first thing you have to see what cell types you are interested in. As I talked to you about Parkinson's, so dead knob cells, which are not producing dopamine, so you have to implant. Then you have to see whether they are indeed producing dopamine or not. We have seen that they also produce dopamine and after implantation, before also we have shown they have dopamine secretion potential, even after implantation also they do support. So these are the different steps. But first thing, what stem cells or what cells you would select for any cell replacement therapy, whether pluripotent, multipotent, unipotent. Then once you select whether there is matching to the, because there should not be any graft rejection, once you that, what place, right place you have to also implant, then whether those are functional or not. So these are different stages in the, which are just the cartoon form it has come. And patient specific cells, one can generate, as I told, induced pluripotent stem cells. Those can be patient specific, one can understand also the disease per se. So by differentiating the cells to specific cell types, and this in fact has gone to clinic, I will show you also in the next slide. Same thing, IPAC based stem cell therapy, they have also tried, in specific animal model, these are the kidney cells. And not only this, one can also show specific, like a miniaturized organs. So this comes on the engineering part where you can develop organoids, organ or bio implants. So this is a interdisciplinary area which will also take the concepts or the principles of engineering and biology both. So one can generate different tissues or organs by this. So what are the prerequisites for this? So one has to, because if you think about organ or tissue, this is a 3D structure. What we grow in our laboratory condition, this is a 2D. So if you have to bring the 3D structure, one has to have the skeleton makeup of that also 3D. So you require a scaffold. Those are like, a, how will you prepare the scaffold using biomaterial? This can be either natural or synthetic. And then, those have to be biocompatible, which will be non-cytotoxic, histocompatible, immunocompatible, and those will not have any mutagenic property. Those also, in some cases, you require those to be degraded. Those should not be retained. For example, if you have any bone fracture, people sometimes put also metallic in blood. But if you want that to regenerate and the endogenous bone formation takes place, you don't want any outside implant to be there. So in that case, some of these implant material that we use, which will be biodegradable, like polylactic acid, polyglycolytic acid, phytosan, etc. And then the cellular part is coming from stem cells. So this is what the donor tissue will take. Isolate cells, you have the scaffold, culture both, make the 3D structure and implant it. By using this, we have already developed the artificial, this is normal skin, bioartificial skin have been developed, now guidance channel have been developed, even vascular prosthesis have been developed, if you see, hardly you can make out much difference between this artificial and normal skin. Same way, as I was telling, the IPSCs have gone to the clinic. In fact, in Japan, it has gone to even case two clinical trial, the eye defect. So, uh, Yashika Sasai, he was one of the pioneers in this field. In, um, unfortunately, he is no more. First time he has shown in 2011 and 2012, one can study these papers also. So using IPS, induced pluripotent stem cells that they have got. So initially they demonstrated using specific matrix or hydrogel based approach. So they are the hydrogel provided the scaffold or the skeleton. And in that, because it's a jelly kind of thing. So, sorry. So using the stem cell, they gave, they gave specific conditions to the cells and the scaffold laden cells. And that further imaginated and form optic cup like structure. And in fact, they have seen it's a building like a retinal structure, retinal cup of optic cup like structure. And this kind of study from patients also, they have isolated IPC. It's going to the patients for RP patients. Same also, another group also, they have shown us here brain, brain development, where from IPSCs, they have developed brain like structure, where optic cup like structures also have formed. And this is the relevant eye structure, which John um, Noblik, even the same from uh, Ohio State University, Rene Anand, their group also, they have developed from the same organ. Because these are miniature structure, 
these are not called organ these are organelles so one can study the development of organ also in the stem cells and the scapula so if you can have the 3d structure maintained so that also and giving wherever the cells are integrated and how cell cell interaction is taking place that for talking to each other and the organ is formed that one can study by using this organoid models and even this can serve as a very good disease model in pharma industries from drug targeting and addressing specific diseases using the same approach we have which has gone also into the clinic in 2011 2012 in fact the publications are there which have been given to the patients and follow up studies also show success in this what we have done in our lab for the bone tissue engineering we have taken mscs developed specific scaffolds and those are either metallic scaffold or ceramic because our bone tissue contains calcium phosphate which is ceramic component so using the same we show the bioactivity of those i will not go much deeper into this and the same thing when we culture the mesenchymal stem cells on those in fact they grow in that they differentiate they secrete osteocalcin which is indicating the specific bone formation in the uh, calcium phosphate deposition in that so that is what why alizanin red staining we have shown that these are in fact capable of forming bone tissues so this can we are doing in vivo studies also in implantation and then we can see the success of these getting integrated in the system for the defective bone you can put the implant so the functional restoration will be done now the new technology is coming it's not only what i show 2d cells then you can have specific tissues or organelles now coming to the organ can you develop organ in gene stem cells yes the answer is yes so here people thought how to make customized organs so if you can here what they have thought if you can have the cadaveric organ per se for example heart so using specific detergent you remove all the tissues decellularize that and then after you get the decellularized part inject the because you have the skeleton maintained here then inject the cells of your interest because heart is a very complex organ which has got cardiac muscles which are the functional organs then you have endothelial cells root muscle cell fibroblast so using syringe with the cells whatever cells you are interested in specific part whichever cells you require you try to inject and make the entire heart possible that kind of research also is going on in fact oats tell that there are publications 2018 and 2014 the same group what they have shown in rat and human they have taken long heart and kidney entire organ decellularized using detergents so as you can say it is becoming transparent but the entire structure is maintained so since there are no cellular components so there, there will not be any graft rejection then they have recellularized them. so this is the heart in fact and they have shown also cardiac muscle specific marker expression and if you see here after recellularization you can see the pumping activity and you can see here the graph showing as the uh, pulsating activity is there it is getting recorded like the way we see in ecg same also in human they have done lungs and heart decellularization again recellularization after that specific marker like collagen 4 fibronectin and laminin these are the markers they are seeing the cytoskeletal or the acm component marker is maintained after recellularization so this is so interesting like if you can make it in the organ so now we have so much deficit of organs so if you, one can think of devising strategy engineering tools and the stem cell the biological part, part so you can bring together the knowledge from different fields and come together and bring something newer strategy and technology which will benefit the human so that is what actually people have been trying or the researcher have been trying coming together and doing another fascinating thing which has come not that uh, many years back in 2017 in fact it has been reported and there are many groups are working on this area using it's a cross kingdom plant kingdom animal kingdom so here plant cells these are actually spinach leaf as you can see the spinach leaf has all those this these are actually looking like the artery and veins in heart so using the spins same spinach leaf they have decellularized it and these 
wherever they are injected cystic dyes and they have seen that it is in fact imperfecting and further they have used human that is the from the umbilical vein cells so endothelial cells can be generated even using pluripotent stem cells or esc cells they have differentiated into cardiomyocytes and they have in fact grown those cardiomyocytes and umbilical vein cells into that and they have seen in fact these are the this area is cardiomyocyte pulsating cardiomyocyte they have got so this is another interesting area one can think of actually using the strategy and how one can think to what extent one can think and utilize the resources that we have around us we have seen the regeneration like in house lizard how the tail once it sets up its tail it gets regenerated same the endogenous machinery how to activate that even from exogenous way how we can develop not only cells even organs one can develop using 3d printing or tissue engineering strategy that is the new era which is coming in the field and most attractive area so the 3d printing that i just talked about so those are the ways people have been developing so now this is a newer technology of 3d printing so this is 3d bioprinting where first you have to imagine whichever organ you are interested in either x ray ct scan mri then you have to design by computer designing so you can design what way you want to do actually print the organ you have to select the material whether as i told the scaffold material either synthetic or natural even including the extracellular matrix component which will keep the cells together then you have to select the cells of your interest which our category you are interested in then mix those those will serve as the bio ink then you print layer by light it's like a inkjet printer or micro extrusion based it's a filament kind of or laser assisted then once you print you can see whether they are maintaining that physiology or not the same also is shown here another strategy they are thinking not only how to print once you can as i told decellularization in fact recently the german scientists they think that if you can make the organ transparent so if you make this transparent then you can see the entire structure is maintained and wherever which cells have to be put accordingly you can using a 3d printer you can the using the bio ink you can print the same a specific area specific cell types so you will get the intact organ the same thing is shown here after printing layer by layer you can have different implications so whichever organ you are interested in that can be used for drug screening tissue engineering for implantable purpose or you can also study in vitro the disease model the other area more ambitious area what people are thinking whether we can develop humanized organs as i told also the pig heart which have been also used recently by knocking down specific genes or expressing human specific genes for the graft uh, implant can be taken by the person so here humanized organs people are preferring mostly pigs for that matter because it's close to human but there are some concerns regarding person person a virus infection so what is done basically stem cells injected half way through gestation then when the offspring are developed you can see human cells in specific organs the same way in fact this is what the schematic has been shown in japan nakaguchi's group they have in fact tried this to develop pancreas in pigs same way people are trying also different ways and means with and how ethically it will be possible that is also a question mark not only organs now again people are thinking whether using stem cells you can make the organism which in human it is not possible but as i told by cnt pathogenic means it's possible but using even ipscs one can think design organisms so how one would do so if you are developing endonic stem cells or pluripotent stem cells when it comes to primordial germ cells <coughs> excuse me so you can give those whatever germ cells <coughs> for female getting the oocytes or eggs <coughs> excuse me you give to the female and you are getting the eggs or the oocytes same also it can be given to the male to get the sperms fertilize and then you will get the eggs so this in human ethically incorrect but animal kingdom this is possible this is the potential that the stem cell field can give to the uh, scientific community so using the same strategy one 
on us that means it shows the germline transmission capability so in fact one group iss group in japan they have developed in fact the in mouse fox have been born by this strategy so this is the possibility that one can think of so this is just a cartoon showing that went for a simple block test and got cloned by mistake and as i was telling in pharma industry also this has got lot of implications so for high throughput screening and toxicological diagnostics one can use the stem cells so why because one can devise protective strategies using this so you don't have to sacrifice animals per se so if you have stem cell disease in a dish model or you can make the organelles or organs per se so these can serve as a very good tool or the model to study different drugs so you don't have to sacrifice animals and you can devise protective strategy for the same so these some of these i have already enlisted where it has already been tested so this is basically summary slide showing that not only we can utilize in clinical settings pharma industry basic biology even new strategy for tissue engineering is coming where organ development can be also possible and there are fast gamut like a uh, implication stem cell in fact can offer to the scientific community and the young generation who are attending your maybe future researcher have to think how best one can utilize this knowledge and tools or they come up with new strategies where we can make the what if this field of advance even much further which will help the human kind so where actually we have reached with the stem cells so these are specific disorders where all the stem cells have been implicated as i was telling the ocular disorder which is very promising and this is something giving sight to people which is you know some very fascinating and very rewarding in fact and these are diff different problems which one can think of utilizing the stem cells for so what all i talked about manipulate genes which is coming under genetic engineering tissue engineering where lab grown organs can be formed drug design in delivery it has got pharma industries implication therapeutic cloning and transgenesis in animal kingdom the stem cells can occur so whatever probably was thought previously something like a dream so with specific approaches and specific knowledge tools and the recent advancement one can think of how to bring the field up go further and it will benefit the society per se and since this is a meeting i will end my talk talking just two minutes two more minutes saying that since this is for innovation or inspiring the students so what is science it's not like physics chemistry mathematics biology are not science scientific innovation comes from critical and rational thinking science is nothing but critical rational thinking and these are the characters life in science you see learning ifs and buts of our very existence and fostering excellence in whatever we do inculcating sincerity commitment enthusiasm enthusiasm loyalty courage and endurance this is life in science our students you have to have these characteristics then you will actually see the sparks of success which will come within you because as this french fish psychologist physiologist said correctly the job discovery is certainly the liveliest that the mind of human can ever feel those who don't know the torment of unknown cannot have the joy of discovery so one has to think to collaborate come together create awareness stay away from myths and tell the public the real picture then you have to think whether the future is bleak or promising thank you all for your patient hearing if there are any question i'm sorry maybe i have exceeded the time and i will just end show the my last slide show the inspiring thoughts of the inspiring leader which a great scientist all of us admire and adore and if you have any questions i'm happy to answer those thank you so much thank you dr nivedita the session is open for discussion Uh, students, if you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions? So, 
it means either they have understood everything or they have not understood anything but anyway if anybody has any questions i am at ncs so anybody can email me okay some question i see here uh, what are the negative effects just one second what are the negative effects of stem cell therapy yes so i think yeah, i saw here guest is waiting i'll just okay i'll just uh, give a quick answer to this negative effects of stem cell therapy in the sense like as i was telling we cannot uh, tell that stem cell is a panacea for all therapy yes wherever it is implicated we know that msc they have got intrinsic potential to cause to bone fat cartilage if you have any bone defect msc then hematopoietic stem cells we know that those have been already gone to the clinic but if you are thinking of hsc or msc and any neural defect you want to cure unless some ground work is done because there are some studies also they report using msc for cardiac defect they have tried but they saw some bony like issues but there are some groups they have shown in animal models it is possible some with a controversial report report so unless or until we know the ground reality and stem cell therapy in the name of therapy we should not explore the system we have to see first whether how much actually practically applicable so end stage somebody is end stage is nothing is working there I, there is no problem probably in trying that first you have to try all possible ways and means and once you have their every knowledge is there that okay this is possible because that's the reason why we do pre clinical trial so that then we have to do randomized trial so this when the any drug is also there same also stem cell therapy is there so you have to think you have to see how efficient the procedure is and whether it is real thing the clinical implication is realized then you have to go the negative effect people are exploited so that is one thing and not that in every case even the age of the patient also matters where the donor stem cells also matters if it is the autologous source the same from same patient we are taking so there is no graft uh, rejection or the any graft this gbst problem but if you are taking allogenic source there are further complications if you are giving any immunosuppression then the patient is actually getting into exposed to many more infectious diseases so many things have to be addressed first before going to the clinic i hope that i have addressed or you can write to me i can also if there is further queries i can always be available i can answer you guys any other questions no more questions Okay, thank you, you all. Like thank you, Dr. Nibedita, for uh, giving us an elaborate lecture on stem cells. And uh, thank you, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Good afternoon, Doctor Ghosh. Doctor. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry, Doctor, uh, to keep you waiting. so students uh, we are we will continue with our second lecture for the day uh, we have with us uh, dr uh, shrikantha ghosh uh, principal scientist and head of the division parasitology uh, institute of veterinary research uh, indian institute of veterinary research uh, it's at nagar uh, he has joined as an ars in the year of 1991 and then joined ivri in 1992 since joining he is involved in research project targeted for the development of Uh, suitable sustainable control measures against tick vector transmitting human and animal pathogens a number of candidate functional antigens of important tick vectors were identified uh, using conventional and advanced technologies characterized the identified targets biochemically immunologically and evaluated their uh, vaccine potential in natural hosts a number of uh, molecular methods linked to functional characterization of the targets in tick system were standardized and are used in different laboratories uh, recombinant protein based vaccine formulations were developed tested in experimental conditions a new multi component uh, vaccine formulation has recently tested and found promising 
to develop suitable vaccine against multistick infestations on animals in indian conditions uh, vector control is uh, mainly focused on repeated use of insecticides uh, leading to development of resistant vectors for the development of resistant map of the country uh, reference biologicals were developed and registered in national registration system uh, standardized resist uh, resistance monitoring tools and the tools are in use in different laboratories already he has characterized and collected uh, from 17 states of the country as an alternative to chemical extensive research was conducted to screen and to develop antitic natural formulations the methodologies were standardized validated one antitic technology has already been commercialized and other technologies are in pipeline uh, five patent applications were submitted on the area of research and two patents have already been uh, granted he is a member of international cancer team of ticks and bone diseases and led a indian team of uh, team with effective from uh, 2004 to 2010 awarded a number of national and uh, international projects uh, for implementation he has guided more than 29 uh, doctoral and masters uh, for the students and has published more than 130 research papers in international and 64 papers in national journals he is also serving as a reviewer for 15 international journals publishing research papers on vector biology and control he has participated in a number of national international and national brainstorming sessions seminars symposiums congresses workshops as an expert invited speakers lead speaker and resource person he has also been bestowed with a number of awards and recently indian association for advancement in veterinary parasitology has given uh, professor stephen k wickel lifetime achievement award for his outstanding contribution to veterinary parasitology so with this introduction i invite uh, professor Go, dr ghosh to deliver his lecture the floor is yours sir okay thank you uh, so i most probably have given very long cv because you have the mail what we have sent i have seen two hours yes sir you sent for that is whatever is there i sent okay uh, okay no issue but uh, from the list of the students i think students are available all are available there yes from the list of the students and the communication is it from you that uh, what i know about the student that is they are the undergraduate students they are the undergraduate undergraduate yes okay they are the students of life science maybe biotechnology maybe pharmacy yes okay i yes. i and your target is to ignite the students so that they can take some something for lecture so they can start something in the make in india program like that yes. i i I, yes. i i i think i thought in that mode and my presentation is a very simplified mode so that there is no problem even in the first year undergraduate students and the for the third year undergraduate students okay so i prepared in that mode uh, i was i was here in the last chapter for the last maybe half an hour uh it is really very good lecture a very advanced type of lecture uh, yes. i don't know students are very much tired maybe i don't know uh, i don't know my students can tell but i will not i will not bombard your yeah. mind i will smooth i will go in a very smooth way so that there will not be any problem no movement on your brain okay the students i am coming to you i'm sharing my screen yes Is it available now? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. Available? You can you can go to the full screen mode. Yes. Are you in the full screen? It is in, not in the full screen. Uh, not at. Okay. So let me resume.
the thing is coming now uh, yeah your screen is coming only screen is coming you can start in this mode also doctor no no problem now yeah. same problem i think it is taking some time to load okay i am i am starting unless yeah, I... you can you can start in this mode no okay okay i i am starting so it may take time but i think it is visible yes yes visible slides also okay so student good morning i am giving some key information about the topic and we are working on this subject since um, more than 20 years so before coming directly into this subject i want to give some information about the ectoparasites of cat you should appreciate fast you should understand fast why this topic is important why you are working on this particular aspect what is the problem until unless we know the problem there will not be any interest to work on this subject so first my presentation will be what is this and why we are very much interested to work on this and why we are interested to control this now if we see mainly from may to september mainly in the northern parts of the country if you are from northern parts and if you are from the eastern part throughout the year if you are in the southern part then only throughout the year only in the northern parts of the country due to the, the winter is too harsh for that reason from november to february this may not be visible at that level but other times of the year it is it will be seen not only on cattle also those who are keeping pets it is also it is visible on pets and many of the pet owner are facing serious problem of ticks then mites mites are all microscopic ticks are not microscopic but this type of lesion on animals are commonly visible in, on cattle buffalo camel sheep pig this type of condition is happening doctor uh, sorry to interrupt the slides are not moving i think it is in the first slide okay I, again it is stuck i think the screen is stuck. Sir, let me let me stop sharing and reattach. I am stopping sharing. moving or not it's it's in the first slide okay let me
Doctor, you can present in this mode itself also. Is it okay now? Yeah, okay now. Now you can. Is it moving or not? Uh, no, not moving. I think it is stuck. Again? Yes, again. Uh, can you can you send me the PPT? I will, I will share from here. Okay, okay. I am sending. I am sending. Presentation by It is moving or not now? Uh, yes, yes, now, now perfect. perfect. Now perfect. No, although yes. I have sent you, okay, then it is fine. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So my student, is, I am very much sorry. There are some problem. Uh, so what I was telling that those who are having pets, you also know what is this. You have also seen. These are very common on pets. And the, the mice also I told, and lice. Lime, lice infestation is also very common on animals. On buffaloes, there's lots of lice infestations up there. You can get pigs and lice infestation together. And if you see closely, on one animal, you can see thousands of lice together. Flies. Besides ticks, mites, and lice, flies of different types are also very common, and these are creating many problems for the growth and production of the animals. So, these all these group of arthropods, they are not only blood feeding. We are also transmitting number of pathogens. T 
due to their blood feeding activities this is automatically the growth of the animals is severely suffered due to the infestations the animals are normally irritated and they cannot take feed properly and ultimately the production is going down tremendously even you may know the biting flies the biting flies is one of the major reasons of loss of or reduction in milk production when the milking is done at that time they are very much active mainly in the evening time and they bite not only animal as well as the human and the bite is very painful overall due to this problem the direct loss on the growth of the animal as well as production of animal besides this to the growth and production we have a very significant very big leather industry in india india is earning very high foreign exchange high amount of foreign exchange to leather export we all know we have highest number of animal population in the world but our loss due to the arthropod infestation on leather so we are not in a position to develop good quality leather although we are having the good um, highest number of animals but we cannot produce the highest number of leather for export or domestic use this is on reasons the arthropod is playing a big role on that in the direct process this arthropods are transmitting number of pathogens they are bacterial protozoal and viral if you go to literature you will find number of pathogens those who are interested in microbiology they can see what are the viral pathogens those what are the bacterial pathogens also as well as those those who are interested in protozoans because like almost all people know the uh, malarial parasites but there is like malaria one parasite is there that is called babesia this is also transmitted by one of the arthropods that is tick so there is a number of pathogens are transmitting by these arthropods and the many are fatal so what we are doing now another thing i was telling the loss loss and loss one of the major area of concern in india and many other countries that we are telling loss but in the most of the cases this has not been suitably estimated this is one of the main reason it is very difficult to present the topic before the any funding agency to prove it that the loss due to this infestation is this and if we can control this particular arthropod infestation up to this level and what will be the benefit if we can have this type of data then only we can have the opportunity of getting funding to do some research to do some innovative work on the subject but this type of data is very much missing so it's one of the one of the important area to work out the economic loss due to the arthropod infestation since 2003 we are citing one reference that particular reference created by one uk team they worked on indian system and on this uh, of their data 
we are citing in 2003, the control cost of ticks and tick-borne diseases is something. That is 498 point, most probably 0.8 million US dollar per annum. Now it is 2022. In this long period, we were citing those references only. Very recently, we took the initiatives and we could work out the possible impact of tick and tick bone diseases in Indian conditions. Here, I have given the loss, economic impact due to ticks alone in four countries. For India, you can see that it is very high value. And when you are adding tick bone diseases, it is crossing 900. So this is the scenario. For that reason, it is very important. We are losing this high value from our economy. If we can stop the this uh, impact, we can reduce the impact at significant level, even of the 50% level, that is going to reflect directly on the GDP of the country. What we are doing since 1950? These are the chemicals, all the undergraduate students, most probably even in the undergraduate, even in the class 12 standard, they are taught about some of the group of insecticides. Here it is written acaricide because we are targeting some of the acarines. So insecticides, some of the insecticides when they are used in for acarines, it is also called acaricides. You all know it. These are the groups that organic proteins, the carbamates, organophosphates, pyrethroids, microcyclic lactones, and formaminases. All these groups, they are commonly used to define name, different names are there under the same group, different types of chemicals are there, and their mode of action is some are different, some are almost on the same pathway. This all these chemical groups were introduced long back and they are in use since today, since that day till today throughout the world for the management of arthropods. You all know you have gone through this in literature. If you see agricultural paste, the same thing. If you see the mosquito management, the same thing, and as well as the arthropod parasites of animal, most of the things are the same. These are applied by spraying, by uh, sometimes on the on soil and grass, the general application is there. Dusting is also done. Fogging for flies is done. Dipping of animals is also done. These are some of the methods. What is happening? These are the most important point. Why we need hard natural formulation of herbal. For that is I'm giving this information. This, all these chemical compound insecticides are introduced in a particular year, like arsenicals, organic products like that year. And at the top, it is also mentioned when the first report of resistance is there. You will find Within 10 years, almost, the targeted organisms develop resistance to the insecticide introduced for the management of that particular arthropods. This is the major problem. That means these arthropods are more billion than what human we are. They are moving very faster more. So they are developing resistance to insecticides, and now there are many group of arthropods are there. They are resistant to multiple insecticides. That is the more major problem globally, the major problem. So what can be done? That is integrated management, integrated paste management. This is also a concept 
you must have read in your 12th standard book or in the undergraduate book, those who are doing entomology in life science or other subjects, they must be uh, reading IPM. There are different components of IPM. One is whatever you are using, you have to monitor it, whether it is working or not working. That is the most important component. Only using has no meaning if we have no data about whether it is working or not working. So we should have monitoring tools to monitor it. Students, these are very, very, very important tools. And many of these students may be interested because to know about the tools, so that they can also use those tools in their laboratory to see whether the insects available and the surroundings causing problems, they are resistant to or susceptible to the insecticides, what they are using. I am, I am going to give you some of the information on that. And also I have given chemical control. Here, chemical control means strategic use of chemicals. How you can develop strategy? On the basis of monitoring, which is working, which is not working, which is working in which particular part, which is not working in which particular part. So your chemical control will be highly strategic. And you should have some cultural practice, those best thing we are doing it since ancient times that like washing, cleaning, like that type of thing. Not keeping animals at this condition, that condition. That type of measure is already there in our animal rearing setup. Another thing is, what is the topic here is herbal formulation or natural formulation. Natural formulation or herbal formulation of different types are now coming into the market for different purposes. Not only for the animal pathogens, this is for the human pathogens, for different disease conditions of human, for the uh, cosmetic industry, for different things, for the growth, health product, many things. So you all or all we are all using these natural products for in different times of our uh, in the daily life. So what is that? First is resistance monitoring. But for the resistance monitoring, we should have a model. Suppose you have flies. So you should have a model how to test it. Here's the problem. The model, scientifically validated model for all the arthropods is not available. This is one of the very important researchable area. If we can develop some model for some parasites, then that will be a great achievement. That model can be used by the other people to monitor the resistance to monitor to as to screen the natural products for development of new products so model what model to be used for what system that is the major problem we have a model so my presentation will be focused on tick model that model we have so since we have that model we develop those that model so we can have very strong data and the data can be validated, and we can very authentically tell that what we are telling that is absolutely correct, and you can do this thing, you will get the same type of result. For a model, we should have something that is a reference material. Reference material means that. Biological material should have some characteristics. 
that biological materials would have some characteristics which can be measured and which can be monitored and it is homogeneous. You should have a system to rear those arthropod and you should have some reference strain. Using those reference strain, you can tell that this particular natural product is working or not working before testing any field sample because field samples are normally highly heterozygous and the reference means that is homozygous to something. It is, if the result will be, there will be some uniformity. But when there is heterozygous, result cannot be uniform. So you cannot control it. So for making the baseline information, we should have some references. These references are available. We develop those references. And these references are in use for the development of data, for generation of the data. These are the, some of the different samples are available. These are all developed in our institutions and it is available in our laboratory for the research. I have given the information about that particular reference sample. You will find that I have given R microplus, which is one tick species, DP cephalus microplus, which is commonly found. This is also called cattle tick. It is normally available throughout the country, except in southern states. And cattle, buffalo, there's a non, in goat, number of species. Hyaloma natrolicum, another tick species. This is also transmitting those who are from Gujarat. You may have some idea that you have also read the newspaper report some six, seven years back that the tick bone CCHF was still, it is coming up. Uh, that tick bone encephalite, the tick bone CCHF, Pimian Congo, hemorrhagic fever, this transmitted by Alemanatolicum. And uh, what I was telling that like the malaria species in cattle, that Epicephalus mycoplus is transmitting the Babesia species in cattle. And another species is called bovine thaleriosis. It is also transmitted by Hyaloma natolicum. That these are not only damaging directly the whole, also transmitting the disease. And since our target to see resistance, so we have also difference resistance strain. It is very difficult to maintain this type of strains in any laboratory, it is not possible. Uh, so for that, different specific type of facilities are required. Uh, for that reason, uh, this is, we have the facility, we have the national institutions, and we are, the mandate of this institution is uh, like this. So we are uh, managing this thing, it is available for tick research. Using this, for any type of monitoring, we should have some starting point. You have been certified, so you don't know from which concentration you should start to screen your sample. So we identify, it is called the discriminating concentration. Discriminating concentration means at which concentration, if the targeted organisms are surviving above this concentration, using adult stage or larval stage, that means that is resistance. That we have worked out this concentration, there's no need to go for below this concentration because uh, you cannot go because this data generation process is very long and we have worked out that this can be used throughout the country, anybody can use this data against this insecticide. If you need, I can share this slide so that you can use this data for your, to establish your data. Now, with this data, we worked out, I told what actually uh, my profile, I, 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 it is a detail, that we worked out the, we mapped the resistant status in some of the parts of the country. These are the situation in different parts of the country. That means number of dots are already there, but there are many dots are to be given and that is to be done. And this is the area many, many, many people can work on this subject and then they can feel 
the gas and it is possible using the information what we generated already. Then these are the some of the information I am giving that what is the status. What I want to say you that this particular species or specimens have developed resistance to multiple group of insecticides, including ivermectin. You know the ivermectin, it is the, uh, the Nobel laureate institutions who developed this ivermectin. And now this ivermectin also ticks have developed resistance to ivermectin because of our irresponsible use of ivermectin. We are not using in a responsible way so that ivermectin also, if the same way is continued, the ivermectin also may lose life span against the targeted species. Under this situation, where ticks have developed resistance to all the insecticides, we have very limited options. One of the options is natural formulations, that is the herbal formulation. Why? One is, it is eco-friendly. Insecticides are not eco-friendly. They are creating problems, they are creating pollution. They are not only the air pollution, this water pollution, it is all type of pollution. And it's a health hazard. Animals, milk producing animals, the milk is also contaminated, meat is also contaminated with these insecticides. For that reason, it is better and it is eco-friendly, this particular natural products, and it is biodegradable. Another chance is, the chances of development of resistance is less. Why? All the Ito formulation, natural formulations are the combinations of multiple active principles. When there is a multiple active principles working in synergy and they are present in defined ratios, the chances of development of resistance to multiple components is very less. While in the insecticides targeted to a particular particular uh, receptor or particular targets, even a single point mutation is sufficient that particular insecticides are not working. Here, that type of things are not there. For that reason, the chances of development of resistance is very low. It's one of the major positive side of the use of natural formulation. The same thing I'm telling the multiple principle. Now, if you see the literature, you will find the use of natural formulation is from very long back to 2600 BC, 1550 BC, Ramayana, Mahabharata, everywhere. The use of herbal things are cited. People are using natural formulation and in the animal field, it's not veterinary practices were there. As per their knowledge, they were using and it was, uh, it was clearly. Problem is, it is their literature, but the most of the things, why it was working, what was the science involved in this particular uh, formulation, it is not scientifically validated. Many, most of the things are not scientifically validated. Now, during the last 15, 20 years, there is a severe change in major changes in technology. Major changes in technology so that we can now, we have the opportunity to prove why we can work out the why, why it is working. This scientific mode and now in the modern mode. We can tell, okay, it was working because it is having this and it is working in this pathway. At that time, 
it was working simply it was the particular product is was curing the particular condition but how it is curing why it is curing no idea was there but now in some cases we are in a position to tell that this is having this and this particular compounds us this type of pathway uh, mode of action for that reason it is curing this particular disease condition but is a challenge challenges since this is very fast plant itself is very fast and plant are having number of stages and same plant is growing in different parts of the country in different climatic zones having different types of environmental conditions soil etc the chemical compositions of the same plant same parts of the plants are also changing that is the most of the most challenging component of the natural product based development of any product it is very difficult to maintain the efficacy of that particular product if we don't have suitable quality control system for that reason a funnel i have shown it is so we have to start that is the funnel with lots of colorful balls and lastly one one particular capsule is coming up normally it is less than 1% success rate in the natural products development research in where it is coming to the field application stage where it is coming to the with the with the information about the mode of action compounds and the active principles mode of action as well as the delivery schedule so this is the challenge this is the challenge but challenge has to be taken and if we can come to the last point you can list to the last point that is that is highly satisfy to nobody can imagine that if somebody can reach from that multiple color to single color what type of satisfaction of that do are getting after reaching that thing but for that the challenge actually is a number of steps are there now i am giving some very broad guideline of the methods So the selection here, the students, it's very very important selection. At the time of selection of anything, which is just targeted to animal, we have to think the cost. The cost of the plant material has to be very less. The plant should be plenty available if it is throughout the. They are best and should be plenty available. And for the growth of the plant, minimum agroclimatic agronomic condition is required. If the plant is water intensive, it is not a good raw material source. So you should see whatever the plant you are selecting for any type of study, the plant should have this type of characteristics. Initially, taking suppose somebody is taking the clove, clove itself is very costly. Anything you can develop from the clove that cannot be used because product based on clove cannot be successful product because of the cost. Nobody is going to purchase those product. Nobody is going to commercialize those product based on very costly raw material. So you have to think of that. This is a very basic thing. And then, those who are from life science, those who are from botany, you should have the 
basic information of the plant material in the select the salvarium and the salvarium details what is there for the in the all the characteristics of the plant if it is in what of the what are the what about with the stage of the plants but the base stage of the plant is leaf and the worst well, that is the roots roots should not be used as a raw material because in that case you are uprooting the plants that means you are uprooting the raw material which is not a good raw material so think on that way. then you can decide the plant for identity you can see the report available the nitrate scan is very crucial from that you can get lots of information i only told the part of the plant and time of the day time of the year and the maturity stage what level of maturity it is at flowering stage or it is at the fruit stage if it is a fruit stage that means the you are getting the particular type of raw material at a particular time not throughout the year but if you are having a target within a leaf which is a particular time of the year this at this color and it is maturing at this not in the early stage of the leaf maturity or in the middle stage of leaf maturity if you have that of the thing that will be the best way because you will get the for the longer duration of time you have the all the raw material is available and the most important thing is the marker if you identify the plant material then you should have chemical marker what are there in those type or that type of raw material which you are targeting may be very important for the development of natural compounds that means that that compound can be used as a marker to check your raw material whether that marker at a particular concentration is available or not if that marker of that particular concentration which is efficacious then only your raw material will be useful what we observe of a particular plant we have screened 119 same plant from different parts of the country we got results from 10% efficacy to more than 90% efficacy why the marker compound concentration is highly variable and we know which level of marker compound is required for activity that means where the marker compound suppose it reaches required point 006 ppm if the marker compound concentration is not available same plant in one part of the country that cannot be your good raw material this is the issue of developing of natural product based and this is the uh, in the dark discovery method this is one of the major component to identify the raw material then there is a different types of extraction fractionation procedure the number of analytical procedures are there these are very uh, very number of solvent systems are there those who are coming from the pharmacy as well as from the chemistry they know the different types of organic solvents are there that organic solvents have different characteristics they can assay a different group of chemicals from the same and they suppose you are using acetone it's something you are using butanol it's something you are using methanol it is something you are using water it is something so you don't know which particular or you may have some idea that you are targeting a particular group of compound it is soluble in butanol you can use the butanol as a extract uh, the solvent for extraction of that and then you can have the butanol the, the compound rich in that particular component you can check this all these things permutation combinations you have to do it and then after doing it 
here you can also see the what of the what we have read in literature that can be proved or you may get some new information through some analytical method there is a methods are there is the hptc high probability hptc so that means so many things are there so from by that way you can also see the there may be a number of compounds are there that is also very important major problem is it takes long time since number of steps are there and number of multidisciplinary people are involved to start from the identification to characterization multiple disciplines multiple people are involved and for and the need and every steps say there is a need for validation revalidation so that you can go for the next stage that is the major issue of tension drug discovery system what we have seen initially we have screened this number of plants and we identified four out of the four plants we we took i have taken the example of one plant coded as nc so many things are coded because these are protected in ipr and as i told first we identified it as in the procedure i told using all the parameters then we have characterized it we have identified the compounds which are active and then we have used those compounds for checking its activity what we found that compounds all these compounds that we i have given it a lead one lead two lead three lead four name i have not given at different concentration it is working against larvian and other state i have i have mentioned the two state only there are also x state also there and leaf first state also there and i, I have the data is showing only that we have the data for the other things also so we got 80 to 85 percent mortality using this. After getting this type of informations, we have become very much enthusiastic to see. Okay, hey, these are all after this in vitro study using the reference sample. We we have tested this sample against the Field sample. Field sample means I told is highly heterogeneous to resistance level. So we have number of field samples from that we have selected some of the samples. And one of the sample that is FTG, what I mentioned in red color, it is ivermectin resistant. Using this lead compound, we observe very good efficacy. If you see the efficacy in against all the isolates, you found that almost in all the cases, there is a significant efficacy of this compound. That means whether there is a, a specific type of resistance or not, all the ticks are these ticks are multi acid resistant, but still it is working. That means this compound. Are working in different pathway than the compounds already in use for the management of this particular thing. This is the most important crucial point here. But this is all in vitro. But one of the major issues that before going to the natural host, you should have to test the toxicity, stability, and toxicity. Without the toxicity study, safety study, nobody should use those things on animal system. So for that, there is specific guidelines are there. Student, please, whenever you will do this type of study, you should follow some specific guidelines. These international guidelines, everybody should follow. And these are some of the guidelines available in the. 
double literature is available online, no problem. And the, they were also given the protocol also. You have to follow the same protocol without any change. And then by that way, only you can prove it, this is safe or not safe. What we found that our compounds are safe. Then we develop formulation. For development of formulations, there are different methods. That is nano formulation, micro emulsion, uh, cream formulation. You can develop different types of formulation using different types of um, adjuvants, stabilizer. There's a different formulation chemistry state. You cannot use anything to anything uh, because it may not be compatible. So compatibility on the basis of the characteristics of the things you are adding, that is very important. But normally nowadays, nano formulation, nano emulsion is very popular because in the low concentration also it is working. So nano emulsion or nano nanoparticle based uh, formulations can be very, very effective. And those are coming from the pharmacy, they may be working on the subject of those from biotechnology, they also working on development of nanoparticles based formulations for the for the application of this particular thing on the site of the infection. The same way this can also be done. Uh, here, actually here we develop two. One is any nano immersion, one is oil based any, that's that uh, upper one is water based and the other is oil based. What we got? We got very good effect directly applying on animal. After three days post treatment, a significant uh, drop of the uh, number of ticks are observed. After that, we have also developed two more formulations. We have given the name F5 and F10. This is simply the enriched D3 and D4. This formulation is developed. Having all the delivery system and that is enriched of D3 and D4 compounds. One is oil based, another is water based. F5 is oil based, F10 is water based. And we found it is efficacious. And in the seven day post treatment, high infestation case and the moderate infestation case, it is giving very significantly good efficacy. So, we, we got very, very good results out of that. And in the large animal experimentation, as well as in the field trial, we got very good results from the F10 as well as the F5. And then within seven days, significant drop in the number of tick infestation of the animals. You can see from the picture that from the pre-treatment and the after seven days, and what was the sound? The dots are there. Many things are only post attachment mark. It is not the tick stage. In the after seven days, post attachment, there are some marks are there. It marks are not going. It takes time to go. And the animals are already black in color. For that reason, uh, there are marks are there. The marks are there. But it is not the live stage, which is taking blood. These are all the blood feeding stage. And the the stage, the side of the stage, you are, uh, it is visible now. It can be about 500 to 800 times bigger when it is pulled down. It will be about now, it may be 10, uh, 5 to 8 milligram, and it may, it may reach up to 200 milligram, 300 milligram. So there are many, uh, many things are there that all things cannot be shown here, but the when the ticks are infested with, the animals are infested with the with ticks, you will get number of stages, which are early stage, mid stage, and the adult stage, with fully fed. And the, if you take the one fully fed animal ticks, and if you cross it, you get the lots of blood, uh, blood are there in that particular uh, tick in the mid gut. So, and the ticks are also laying very high number of eggs. 
per continuous life cycle. One per peak is laying about 1,000 to 1,500 eggs. So you just you see the reproductive potential. So you cannot manage it continuously. It will uh, infest animal only by controlling your animal uh, infection on animal. You cannot control it. You have to control the as well as the animal say. So we are telling that you apply on animal as well as on the animal say, so that those who are dropping from the animal that can also be killed. So that egg link process can be stopped. We also develop some clean formulation. This is targeted towards the pet animal. And student, you can also develop some collaboration with some good institutions for developing some something for a good formulation, not only for the ticks alone, that can be also for the lice, that can be also for the mice. If you can do it, this is type of things are not available in any international market, maybe national market. So that is the totally virgin area. And only we are, I have worked on this thing. There are many things to be done and no proper applied repellent is available because when there is a repellent, there is a highly hygroscopic and then it will be evaporating very fast. So very difficult to keep the efficacy against the flies. So we should have very good delivery system so that you can keep the activity for the longer duration of time. This is very, very important research area. You can have, you can discuss with your colleague, you can discuss with your faculty, and you can try to develop something for flies. And if you can develop that fly, this is not only important for the animal production system, as well as that can be a product and that can have huge commercial potential. We developed one product and that is already commercialized to a company. I have written already. And all the characteristics required for a product to be commercialized, we worked out on that and we are expecting because of the COVID problem, the company is taking time, but we're expecting any day this will be in the market. And we will be in a position to use those things against the dog tick, against the pet. What is not explored properly? As I told, the tension only is there that we have not taken properly. There are many reports of in vitro efficacy, but we have a very limited report of in vivo efficacy. Only by telling in vitro that it is working is not going to serve purpose. We have to tell in natural host it is working. Generally, it is good. And model, I told that we don't have the model. So we can develop some model for others like for the mites, like for lice, like for flies, then that will be an excellent one, excellent area to work for all these things. And we can have a very, very good number of products which can be helpful for the animal production system. Friends, what I presented today, it is the contribution of multiple people. And this is a multi-institutional program of multiple national institutions and funded by multiple funding agencies. I am, I am, I on behalf of the multiple people presenting before you, and I want to add the, I want to decide the interest among the younger generation so that they can also take up the challenges and can come up with some good product and that will be helpful for the Indian animal production system. That is the our system, the animals are ours, the environment is ours. So for that, this is for the reason why I have taken this particular presentation in this format. This may be suitable for you. And thanks to all, wish you all success in life. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Bush.
Uh, the session is open for discussion. If you uh, need any clarifications or doubts, you can ask Dr. Krishna. Any questions, students? Chat is there, some. Okay. Yeah. Chat okay. box is also there. You can use it. No, no, that is different. That is the that is from the stem cell therapy. If if anybody has any questions, that can be also sent to my email ID. My email ID is given. Uh, you can ask anything. I can help you. Even I can help you to contact people, those who are working in the subject. It is not that it can be done singly. It has to be a multi-people format. So I can also help you with this form, that format also. In different parts of the country, I have the people, those who are ready to work with the young group of people. No questions? So in that case, we will, uh, would like to thank Dr. Bush for joining us and elaborating on the uh, herbal practices of ectoparasites uh, and also sharing many uh, knowledge with us, with your experience, past experience in the field of, field of parasitology. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bush, for joining us. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Him, that you have given an opportunity to share my idea to the young. Because normally we are giving these all this information, those who are doing PhDs or post PhDs like that. Uh, so this is something. Uh, but I have not seen any of the um, students. They should be visible in the in video that these people are there. Yeah. <laughs> they, they should be available. Uh, because these people are very important because we are going to complete our life cycle in the study. Always everybody has to reach some stage. So if the young people are not coming out, then whatever we, are, whatever we have done, that will be stopped at that stage. That has to be taken up by somebody. There will be many of them will be working on that, developing a project proposal at the end of the workshop. Uh, okay, so very good. Very yeah, good. We also have a veterinary uh, theme also. So people okay, will okay. be working that's okay. what practice is okay. Uh, okay. to develop those. Okay, that will be good. If yeah. I can be helpful for anybody, because I'll be very much interested to give some idea to somebody, those who are involved in the animal thing. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. We'll contact you in this case. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shall I stop here, Sherry? Yes, yes. Please. Okay, you can share your whatever the slides I share to you. So you can yeah, share with the students, no problem. No, I have no problem. Sure, sure. Okay. 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 Thank you. I'm leaving. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you all.